Hello everybody and welcome to Kato Reviews, where every month we outsource an anime for us to watch in its entirety from patreon.com slash KatoYT, then you review it for you all here. I'm your host, Hoodie, and as always, I'm joined by my co-host, Zero. Hello. This month, as per the request of Doji and the people over on our Twitter, we have watched the Berserk 2012 movie trilogy. If you want your chance at our next review, head on over to our Patreon for details or our Twitter at Zero and Hoodie to, vo- to vote on the monthly poll. Link is in the description. All right, Zero, for those who aren't aware, please give us a brief synopsis of this Berserk trilogy. I'd love to. The Golden Age arc trilogy of Berserk movies regales us with the story of how anime Frank Castle, aka Guts, pledged his blade to Griffith, and ultimately how he encountered his first demons and started walking the path to becoming the black swordsman of legend status in the anime community. It's also so horrifying that during the entire third movie, I was just thinking about scolding the audience for voting for this grotesque (laughs) exercise in misery. (laughs) Uh, Is that all? Yeah, that's it. Okay, so on the note of scolding the audience, though, let's, uh, because I'm sure this is going to be a a thing worth mentioning. Um, Before we get into it, we should preface with our respective history or lack thereof with the manga or anime. I don't know, how, how much have you seen and what do you know about? Uh, so as far as I've seen of uh, Berserk, uh, is literally none of the anime, and I started, like, I picked up the manga about three issues before it went back on hiatus, so I really haven't seen that much. So, uh, wait, but uh, how much of the, mon- of the manga have you read? Uh, about three issues, maybe two. Wait, from the beginning, or...? No, like, I just picked it up where it was, and then it went back on hiatus immediately. This is also what I did with um, Food Food Wars. Wars. Yeah, Yeah. there's a really bad way to read things, I think. (laughs) This is, manga is designed for this purpose. Sure. (laughs) Well, some are. Uh, um, I'm, okay, personally, I had, like, I'm surprised with how little I knew, because virtually zero knowledge on, like, the context of what this was, outside of just knowing that, like, there is a character named Guts. There is a character named Griffith. And maybe I think I knew that there was a character named Casca. Outside <laughs> of that... Oh, and there was, you know, the a couple rape scenes that I had yeah. was aware the, of. So we have identical knowledge. <laughs> yeah. So for all intents and purposes, I was a blind viewer. And let me say, I know a ton of you guys, before we even get into the fucking review, I know a ton of you guys are going to say that, oh, we shouldn't have started with the movies, we should have read the manga, or watched the anime, or whatever, and to that I say, fuck you, because we had a Twitter poll where there were three options, this was (laughs) one of them, and I even said in the Twitter post, I said, this will be probably our first experience with Berserk, so vote with that in mind, and despite that, you guys voted for this goddamn anime, we could have been doing Erased, we could have been doing... (laughs) <laughs> Batum or whatever the other one was, which actually sounded pretty interesting. I might just watch that in my own time later. Um, but the people spoke. They spoke for Berserk, and we are but rivers to our people, so this is what we're doing. Now, all of that said, I will start this off by saying I was surprised by how much I like this. Because I really was going into this expecting it to be like a sort of incoherent, abridged story akin to what you might get out of like a recap movie or something you know like um Mm. you have to watch the anime and this is just sort of like a synopsis of what happens in the anime and if you don't if or if you don't read the manga then you're not going to even really understand what's happening that's what i was expecting going into this which is why i was really apprehensive about even accepting this nomination for a review this month at all but i will say this was fully functional you know i i remember stopping near the middle of the second movie and just thinking you know this is good. You know, I, I really care about the characters and, and what's happening. I get what's ev- I get everything that's happening. There were like a couple, you know, some of the larger politics of it all. I wasn't super, you know, like understanding, but I, I got enough to understand the gist of what's happening. And I think the character work was all completely, you know, a I'm not going to say a one, but it was, it was like uh, it was it was it was functional is how I would describe it. It totally worked as a s- standalone story outside of the anime and manga. I definitely think it did a good job of conveying the narrative, despite the smaller time frame that it had to work with. People warned us that, uh, you know, it is like a, a condensed version, so we're not getting the whole story. But I didn't really feel like I was missing out on too much. And, yeah. you know, we probably are, but 
It didn't, like, feel incomplete, is what we're getting at. Yeah, and this is going to be one of those things where it's, like, we are almost blessed with the fact that we didn't know, because we don't have that, you know, we're not cursed with knowledge, you might say, of uh, the things that we're missing out on. The one thing I will say, or rather, the only time I felt like we might have missed something very obviously, and this might not even be true, because I didn't, you know, I I don't fucking know what was in the manga, but I did (laughs) feel like there was maybe a gap between movies two and movie three, um in which really? something might have happened where it's it's griffith is tortured and then that's the end of the movie and then the next movie starts with guts coming back and there's like a, a year, year in between yeah. so it's like I, I i'm sure maybe even in the manga there is a time skip but i feel like there was at least room to have a story about like well what is guts doing when he's not with the band of hawks and why does he decide to come back and like or we know why, but, like, wh- what is happening when he hears that Griffith is being tortured and kidnapped or whatever? And, like, what does yeah. Casca do with the Band of Hawks when she has no one by her side? Like, there is, I mean, she has other commanders, but there's no Guts, there's no Griffith, the big, you know, beacons of this band of mercenaries. And it's just her left. And, you know, that's obviously not something she considers herself very comfortable at. So, what I mean, what does that look like for her? I think there was there was a lot of story that I would not be surprised if in the manga that's at least explored a little bit. If like at the very least, I think we're missing a scene where Guts, you know, hears about what's happened to Griffith. And at the very most, I think we've missed entire you know chapters of story. Yeah, and now that you mentioned it, I guess there is a lot of uh, potential there. For me, the one moment where I was like, we're probably missing out on something is when uh they. When the Band of Hawks captures that enemy fortress in movie two, I think, Mm -hmm. and uh, the, I don't know, the Lord or whatever goes to Griffith and they start talking and then he's like, you were just a a stepping stone on my path and he just fucking stabs him. Yeah. I was like, do these two know each other? (laughs) I I guess I see that there could have been room for it. Actually, you know what? I I think there is something cut out here because I, 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 so... I'm not going to talk about it now, but towards the end, I did, after watching this, I did do a little bit of light research just to see exactly what this, you know, context of this story was in the larger narrative of Berserk. Um, and it, it is, it is very much implied in the movie that those two had sex, you know, uh, you know, this guy clearly has yeah, a thing for Griffith. It, this guy clearly has a thing for Griffith, has a thing for, you know, light haired, you know, skinny boys. And um, it is implied that Griffith was maybe a, a sex slave for him or, or some sort of thing like that. Uh, doing a little more research, I don't think it was explicitly said in the movie, but it, it it does seem to be the case that Griffith willingly started sleeping with this man in return for, like, wealth for his band of mercenaries or whatever. So, yeah, that is definitely something that wasn't explicitly explored in the movie, but I did feel like the the context clues of, like, just, just thinking just that... Just his reaction to seeing Griffith on the battlefield... Yeah, and I feel like wanting to capture him alive and everything. Mm-hmm. I feel like I got I got the gist. You know, I I, I didn't I didn't get the the nitty gritty details of it, but I got the idea that like these two have a relationship, and uh, definitely could have been explored more. But overall, I will say in in terms of like, I mean, maybe this is just sp- speaking to my personal preferences of you know cutting down anime, but uh, this was <laughs> this was a, a master class in how to just cut out subplots and cut out storylines and get all of them out of here. Just b- boil but, it down, but still make it work. Yeah, boil it down to the absolute barest necessities and have it fucking work um you want to just open up to just random things we liked or disliked i'll start with another good moment of uh subtlety which i found uh griffith's like resentment of guts's strength after you know the whole torture thing like the first thing he does when he sees guts is like start choking him Mm -hmm. and it's never or trying to at least (laughs) well yeah and we never hear, like, his internal monologue of, oh my god, my life sucks. <laughs> but it is, uh, it's still, like, made clear that uh, he s- sort of resents how far he's fallen. And it's c- yeah. it's portrayed in a subtle and compelling way. Griffith is honestly one of the biggest surprises to come to me going into this. And... I mean, oh my god, I'm, I, I, as soon as I get a, a free chance, I'm going to watch that fucking 30 minute Griffith did nothing wrong Alexander video because this <laughs> <Me> is, too, <laughs> man. this is a fucking, th- this character is made for analysis. Like, I need to know what people, yeah, I need to know what Alexander has to say about this character. But, um, one of the biggest surprises to me because I knew this was a well written character going into it, but I didn't expect 
you know, to like him as a person, only as a piece of the, the narrative. In the same way that, like, I, I like Joffrey in Game of Thrones. I don't like, I obviously think he's an evil piece of shit, but I think what he does with the narrative is good. I expected that to be a similar thing for Griffith. I don't know if you can relate to this at all, but... You know, it, as a byproduct of my limited knowledge of the series, I was under the impression that Griffith was going to be this sort of no-nonsense, you know, utilitarian, ends-justify-the-means type of villain. And there are some yeah. semblances yeah. of that written to his character, but what surprised me so much was the amount of empathy and relatability that they were able to pull from this arc. You know, I would have never guessed before going into this that we'd see a scene in which Griffith was so emotionally compromised as when he was in that pond broken down like a, a literal yeah. husk of an, a man try, about to kill himself basically is he literally was about to kill himself or when yeah. you, you know he's watching guts and casca you know hugging outside of his tent and then afterwards um again not that i condone these actions but afterwards tries to assault <laughs> her you know or at the even at the end of the second movie where he sleeps with the princess and the entire time he's like just imagining guts and like it's it's clearly he's just taking out his you know frustrations on guts leaving on this girl and sort of um you know, I I think there's so much that, to this character that I didn't anticipate going in. And, you know, obviously I don't agree with sacrificing and raping people. <laughs> but I think they did an amazing job, like such an amazing job at presenting an incredibly deep psychological motivation for everything yeah. Griffith does. Like every single thing I totally get, you know, this is like a foundational belief that I could apply to my own life and it's just blown to an 11 here and it brings him to such extremes. But like, so obviously I don't agree with those extremes, but I understand the foundation of the belief, he, the logic he's using to get there. Yeah, I definitely didn't expect to like Griffith as much as I did. Yeah, He was... Like, I knew that he was this uh, strong, smart leader, but I, don't, I mean, like, okay, going into this, all I knew about Griffith was that he rapes Casca in front yeah. of Guts. <laughs> so yeah. I was like, this guy's probably going to be an asshole, but he's like a charming personality on screen. So mm -hmm. very uh, well-written character. It's just, I really, like, it, it all stems down from this. And I, that's why I, I really fucking and it's and one of the things I like about this movie that I don't know if it exists in the manga because and I think this is this this could be a byproduct of how short the movie is. There isn't really a lot of overt explanation of the guts in Griffith dynamic. You know, it's not a lot. There there yeah. isn't a lot of like outwardly explored. Griffith feels this way about guts. It's a lot of subtext. It's it's a lot yeah. of, you know, just small interactions here and there. Things that they don't say. Things that they do say. Things that, you know, all these, like, tiny little things that build this large puzzle. And when it, and I really do go back to that scene of the end of book, uh, book two, the end of movie two, where he sleeps with the princess. I thought, like, one, I thought that scene was amazing. Like, uh, the music that was playing in the background was mm -hmm. fantastic. But, um, you know... It just, it really painted such a strong picture for who this character was and the things he's going through and the dynamic of, you know, this goal that he's had for his entire life, this thing that he's always wanted to achieve. And he meets this guy three years ago and his entire perspective is being changed and the fear of change, you know, the, the fear that Guts has opened up this different aspect of his life, which is not pursuing this goal, which is not, you know, challenging this, you know, uh, rather trying to take over this country, this thing that he's always wanted that Guts is saying, or not literally saying, but providing an alternative for, the fear of that I think is something that I don't know if everyone can relate to, but I certainly can, where it's like there are friends that I don't have anymore that like I didn't just say I'm not friends with you anymore, but like we grew apart because of – you know, we just weren't in the same place creatively or whatever. We're like, they were like maybe stunting me a little bit. And I just, I wanted to go one way. And they wanted to go the other way. And we just ended up fading apart. I think that is basically the, the simplified real life version of Griffith versus Guts and like the dynamic that they have. And I thought that was such a relatable, you know, interesting dynamic that they were able to uh, encapsulate in this movie. I agree. And I also want to talk about how cool Guts is. <laughs> Because uh, he is a really great protagonist. I mean, another thing I knew going into this was about uh, the abuse he suffered as a child and how he had to kill... Uh, what was his name? Uh, I don't know who you're referring to. It was... His uh, like dad? Or his well, father figure thing type person? Yeah, that guy. And, uh, I mean, it's... I like that he's... Uh, like framed as the struggler which is what uh the demon at the end of uh the third movie calls him his 
he's like one of the few anime characters who's like completely human but still a complete powerhouse and mm-hmm. his talent for like gore and viscery it, like it gave me that a uh, frank castle vibe that i was alluded to in, in the synopsis you know there was a moment in that last in that last movie it's like during that whole ritual sacrifice and all that where it's like um guts is surrounded by demons and i was watching this with a friend and i you know i said to this person i was like how does Guts get out of this? Because I know he does. Like, I know he... <laughs> I, just knowing who Guts is... Not even knowing what the story is, but just knowing who Guts is as a person and as a character, he's going to win this fight. The, just, the question is, how is he possibly going to beat this surrounding conclave of demons? And that that is the type of character that Guts is. I mean, he really is a berserker. And I, I think it is a... It, it, watching him fight the... 100 people you know it was him he yeah caught, he was like he killed to say, yeah that was a fucking amazing scene i just think i okay so obviously I, I don't i don't have much to say about this obviously the cgi you know that that is the big thing i knew about this movie going in is it's it definitely it definitely sucks you know <laughs> i don't know not much i can do if, if that's a deal breaker for you this, this review doesn't it doesn't have a purpose because that's a deal breaker. It does suck. But I don't think this movie was devoid of all... Like, this movie does function outside of just a story level. I do think while the CGI sucks 90% of the time, there was 10% of the time where I thought, this this movie looks pretty good, you know? This movie looks pretty good. The The scenery is pretty good. Um, you know, I, I didn't think this fight was terrible. It is not devoid of all praise. And I think, you know, I do look on some of these Guts fights and think, yeah, this is this was not poor CGI. Yeah, I, there were definitely moments that I thought this animation isn't that bad. And in, yeah. in fact, the CGI didn't really bother me like explicitly throughout the entire thing, but it it was kind of like visually jarring. So yeah, I don't know if this it just, is it looked bad. This came out in 2012. <laughs> I I'm, I'm sure someone has made a video about this. I don't know if it's like um, a technological limitation, budgetary limitations, or just poor artistic direction i don't know what the reason is but if it is something like just technological limitations i really it really sucks that this was made in 2012 because i would have loved to have seen like if this didn't have cgi issues man i think this would be fucking amazing you know like i already think it is pretty good like i think this is really good and it would be even better if it didn't have just every once in a while that was like a really wonky movement that a character did or something you know like it just looks like yeah. looks like someone was you know in paint and just slid them across the scene <laughs> it looks uh, like a really early ps3 cut yeah. scene <laughs> <laughs> um any other things you really like you want to talk about Costco at all or i guess i don't know is that something you dislike <laughs> i'm well i'm not a, a big fan of Costco overall but she didn't really come up in my notes yeah, the only thing I had about I don't I don't have Costco in my notes because to me I didn't I I'll clarify that I did not have this issue, but you know, speak for the people. I did the person I was watching with was a female and she expressed that, you know, Costco it did kind of bother her that Costco was um despite being on paper a very strong character, like physically and like leading this army, that never really was something she was given in the movie like she like and this goes back to what i was saying earlier where it seems like we might have missed something in between two and three where casca is leading this band of mercenaries for a year by herself um mm-hmm. because we don't see that casca does kind of present herself only in situations where she is emotionally you know compromised you know she's like crying and uh or whatever or she's <laughs> literally being raped like that that is that is what casca is doing so I, and it's a question and, I, like again, I will preface this didn't really bother me. I think the problem is that and I don't even necessarily think this was the wrong choice. Other than you know, it would have been cool to see what Costco was doing for that year. That would have been you know a fun time. But other than that, I don't think it was necessarily a wrong choice to have like you know. <laughs> I don't like saying this, but it wasn't a bad choice to have Costco get raped. You know, I thought that was. <laughs> I understand why that happened in the narrative. I think that was a good move. But I think if you are the type of person that is looking for strong powerful female characters i don't think i'm gonna say this might not be true in the manga or the anime but at least in this movie i think casca does get the the uh the short end of the stick at least a couple times you know like even in that you're gonna say the shaft (laughs) i was not but uh (laughs) thank you for that um (laughs) even in that that great scene that i was talking about earlier where guts fights 100 people casca he he, it's it's under the pretense of all right i'm gonna do this casca so you can run away and be you know safe you don't have to actually fight and then she does doesn't even really get to run away before she's literally assaulted like sexually assaulted by another person like this Mm. is 
you know, she she definitely isn't for those that are seeking out this attribute in female characters, I don't think she necessarily reigns those in in this movie. Again, that might not be true for the manga. I would I would venture to guess it probably isn't true for the manga, but for this movie, yeah, that. I would say considering like how uh, prevalent rape is in this universe, that that Casca isn't so much of a weak character because I do think in similar uh, subtle ways to other characterizations that we've touched on in this uh, review, I do think uh, Casca's like progress as a leader was shown or in some capacity as like when she uh, she pretty much takes the uh, castle or whatever in that uh, raid in the second movie and then you know when she's like but leading the rescue mission against even, uh or even for that, griffith what i would counter with is even in that cat and this is one of the things that actually did bother me was in that castle siege she was leading it and then she gets in there and she loses the fight for a terrible reason like a really really terrible reason she loses she almost loses that fight is like the guy she's she displays herself she's like oh i'm you know last time you caught me off guard i'm fully rested now and then she styles styles all over him shows how cool and powerful she is great and then he's like hey look over there and she's like what and then he just beats her like he just fucking <laughs> pins her to the wall and is like ready to um like basically slit her throat and the only reason she lives is because he's kind of like toying with her a little bit so in that moment i was like wow you really did Casca dirty right there you know like she definitely could have just won this fight i don't know why that is true i i don't quite buy based on these three movies that she is a strong fighter but i do like kind of buy that she's a strong leader even though that also gets undermined when guts comes back and everyone in the band of hawks is yeah like, exactly hey captain like they're all, like <laughs> That that's what I was talking about earlier when I said um I, I don't remember exactly what I said, but I was alluding to the idea that like even as a leader, she's not necessarily I don't know if it's a comfort issue or just they don't respect her as much. Because there was a moment where they were like they 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 did say we'll band under Casca. So they do recognize her authority, but when Guts came back, it was like, you know, hey, Casca's Please not looking. Stay. Guts, take us with you. Take us with you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like pretty much. So I, I don't know. It, it, it's definitely a back and forth. There are moments here, which because there are moments, I'm, that's what inclines me to believe that um, the manga probably does make her a much stronger, better character. Um, again, not that I personally had many issues with her. I just get why someone would. Yeah. Um, I do have something I dislike, which, you know, I don't know how much I would actually fault. I, I, I This is a fault of the movie and not necessarily a fault of the story of Berserk. I do think there were some structural issues in the sense that, um, you know, relating back to the fact that I didn't really know anything about the story going in, I had not even realized, and I mean, maybe this is dumb of me, but I had not even realized that this wasn't a completed thing. Like, I thought this trilogy was an adaptation of Berserk, the entire story, and not only was it not that, the entire story isn't even a thing yet. I mean, that's the manga is still going. It's on, I, think, I believe it's on hiatus right now. So. Yeah. You know, I remember being at the last 15 minutes of the third movie and thinking, man, how are they going to wrap this up? And still have time for credits to roll, you know? <laughs> you know, like, man, Griffith just, he's, he's gone. He's a god now. He's just, Griff, uh, Guts, how are you going to do this with 10 minutes to spare? Um, <laughs> he actually just strolls back into hell and kills all five of them immediately. <laughs> yeah, so afterwards, I did do some, like, once, once that happened, I was like, okay. <laughs> All right, I see what's happening here. And then after that, I did some light research. And the thing that I saw, though, was that this isn't even the first arc. This is the second arc. It's just chronologically, it is, it is a prequel. So, like, the first arc takes place right after this, which I think is called the Black Swordsman arc, where... That makes sense. Yeah, Guts is now, he's, like, fucking missing an arm. Casca's, like, this, you know, traumatized victim. And he's just, he is on the search for Griffith and wants to kill him. That is the, where the story begins in this. And then it, and then after that, I believe it was like 90 chapters or whatever, or 70 chapters. We then go to the prequel of like, okay, how did this all happen? In the That sounds like a really great idea. I would love to have, you know, seen the story play out that way. But because I saw it, you know. With the present, prequel first. Yeah, because I started with the prequels, it presents a structural issue in which I don't think the movie presents itself as a long running series. You know, I think in isolation, without knowing the context of the story in its publication, the movie seems like a fairly close, like, close-ended trilogy up until that last 15 minutes where I realized, oh, yeah, you absolutely do not have enough time to wrap up the story now. But up until that point, I was like, 
yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm going to see an ending. Like, I'm going to see Guts kill Griffith or, or some shit like that. You know, in an alternate universe where I see Black Swordsman first, I don't think that's an issue. I think, or, you know, at least I imagine that arc presents itself in a way that Guts is on a long-term quest in the same way that, like, Naruto wants to be Hokage or, you know, Gon wants yeah. to find his dad. And thus justifies itself being a long-running series. That's where I think the movie very clearly could could have just had an ending, you know, where, like... Instead of that, instead of Griffith escaping and, or rather, Guts escaping and, you know, doing all that, he just fights Griffith there and, you know, kills him or whatever. I, I don't know what the ending would be, but I think the movie presents itself as being a little more close ended than I think the manga would or the manga does. And I think it is a matter of, you know, structure. And, and to be clear, I'm not saying that this being long running is the problem or, or that, sh- that the shorter ending is a better one. I'm just saying that. You know, this is an indicator of why structure is important, and the order in which we tell stories changes what the story is. Mm. Definitely affects your uh, expectations as well. Yeah. Uh, I have a, a couple dislikes, and I mean, as I sort of alluded to earlier, I think condensing the misery of a story as dark in tone as Berserk, kind of makes for a grueling watch. Mm-hmm. Uh, almost to the point that I felt less inclined to check out Berserk after watching this. Yeah, because... I think I think that was like most evident with the third one. I actually did not feel that way for 1 and 2. I was actually super yeah, into it. Yeah, I was definitely super into those two. But then, I, like, the next night I'm watching 3 by itself, and I'm like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> It's it's just the same reason I never finished Helsing. It's difficult to vibe with this level of bleak tone. And yeah. It's like, I'm expected to care about characters that are essentially just frowning faces drawn on pinatas. <laughs> <laughs> that is an excellent metaphor. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, any other dislikes? No, that's about it. All right, so let's just jump into recommendations. Uh, I'll go first. You know, this was definitely good. You know, it, it's... I do have the unique perspective of this being my first taste of the story. So I think maybe this won't be the popular opinion, but um, this, this was good without the context of the manga and what, what might actually, you know, be missing here. I think, I think this was a coherent, well-made trilogy that can be, you know, enjoyed by people like me who haven't read the manga or haven't seen the anime. And, you know, I would, I would make sure to tell them beforehand that this like, isn't a conclusive ending and that this is just a piece of the larger puzzle and that, the rest of the puzzle doesn't exist yet. But other than that, I do think, you know, I am, I, again, I was surprised by how good these movies were. And I, obviously, obvious discretion for like, I would not recommend this if, you know, like gore or like sexual assault were things that you couldn't handle. You know, that is, it is yeah. such a, it is not like there is one rape scene. It's like there are multiple rape scenes in every single movie. Yeah. And, uh, <clears throat> I would say, uh, I would recommend this. I I would recommend like if you have the time, watch the anime. But I guess yeah. if you don't, these this trilogy is not bad to watch. Like it'll definitely pique your interest. It it'll let you. It'll inform you whether or not uh, Berserk is the show for you. I think. Yeah, for sure. If you can't if you can't make it through the movies, you probably can't make it through the manga or the anime. What I will say though is, and I thought this while I was watching it. I do really enjoy the format of movies so much more than the episodic format of anime like i was able to get through these movies like nothing as to where like conversely if a 12 to 16 episode anime happened it would take me days because i I just don't want to fucking sit down and (laughs) and, and if you you know bear with me for a second fucking ops every goddamn 20 (laughs) minutes you want to take a two minute break just to sing at me i don't care i don't care so yeah you know, the movie format gets rid of all of that. I mean, there were still OPs, but there's, you know, three movies. It's one so. every, like, 90 minutes. <laughs> yeah. So it's so, not that bad. And and the pacing, there's never a moment where, you know, the episodic format does not lend itself to binging. I mean, it there are definitely bingeable anime, for sure. But, like, the the format itself is not, like, you had to you had to defy the format to, to do that. So, like, mm-hmm. the idea that of taking a break two minutes for the op and then one minute for the ed like that is so con or that's so antithetical to the idea of sitting down and watching something for like the next four hours so i really do think the pacing of the movie is probably going to be different than the pacing of the anime and i i which is why like 
I, I'm sure that a lot of people will enjoy the anime. I'm sure that mo- most people will enjoy the anime even more. But I do think it's hard for me to just flat out say, you know, the movie is good. Go watch the anime. It's probably better. Because I do think there there's there are probably some differences to, you know, the presentation. And I do think I can only say that I enjoy the presentation of the movie for the most part. Yeah. <clears throat> Anything else? No, that's about it. All right, everybody, that's going to do it for this month's Kato Reviews. If you want your choice for what anime we review next month, head on over to patreon.com slash KatoYD. Kato y- nope, not YD. Kato YT for details. <laughs> Join cool kids such as Gage Lambert, Anwar Ali, H2 Mass, Miguel Torres, Paige Mulder, Hunter Hunter 2011 Dick Riding Association, Lerpa Anuj, Israeli, Israel Costellas, Spencer Irula Games, Camamoon, and Doji. I have been your host, Hode. Hody. <laughs> I, I am fucking up this outro. Huh? I have been your host, Hody. Joined as and always. I'm Zero. <laughs> Joined as always by my co host, Zero. <laughs> uh, I'll be back in just a couple days with the final Hunter Hunter video. So stay tuned for that. Nice. Bye bye. Later.